everybody hello out there today it is the in sync era podcast i don't know what number episode but i know we're in season three and you know i'm your boy your host rapper singer music architect music activist you know a little bit of everything it's your boy Lil l and today i have special 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 guest and um i would say radio personality and royalty today we have the one of the halves of the powers point podcast today everybody let's welcome lynn marie springs Woo! Hi. <laughs> hello Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, yes, yes. I, I, you know, I want to return the favor for the future, you know. So, yes. you know, and, and, <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, being on the Powers Point podcast as well. And um, I wanted to uh, ask you, I know I asked you beforehand, but, you know, for the, for the pod, how are you doing today? I am super well. And I'm just, I'm so excited to be here with you today. Oh, thank you. But thank you for asking. How yes. have you been? I've been just working so much. Like I've been just getting ready for this upcoming concert and everything like that. And just been getting my, getting my, you know, my dots in a row and just knocking off things off the list, just scratching them off one by one is I get less, less stressed and more relieved if, every time I scratch one or another one off. Oh, I love it. You're a list maker. Yes. Literally. I have I, lists all over. I can't stop making <laughs> lists for everything. I have lists and calendars. If I don't have it written down in six places, I'm never going to remember. That's me because I I, <laughs> I have this thing, this pet peeve. I don't know what it is, but if as long as I write it down or put it in a list, I know it's solidified because I'm afraid of, because my brain is like a computer. So I feel like if I don't write it down, I might lose it. And I've been practicing trying to, you know, just retain it and hold it in my brain. But you know, it stays retained when I just, okay, put that on the list and write it right there. Oh, it feels so much better. Yeah. And you know what? I actually had heard in some training before that if you have like a dream or a goal that you, if you write it down, it, there was some crazy statistic. It was like an 80% increase in odds that that goal will actually be met because it's written down. You've like mm. taken the time to decide it. Yes. Yes, and I it, it's been better for me because I used to always go in like a wonder loop, like, okay, what is next? And then if say it's something I, I have this thing where I write something that I want, whether it be a list of a buy want list or just a certain like album project or just or an idea. And if I write it down, it's good, but sometimes I have to differentiate, okay, what can I do now versus okay, you're gonna have to wait for this. You know, and yes. that's, the, that's the hard part for me. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm a jumper. There are so many things that I'm like, oh yeah, I totally want to do that. And I just dive all the way in and I've skipped the first 10 steps altogether. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it comes back to bite me. You always have to go back, mm -hmm. but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So give, give, give the viewers some, you know, some background or, uh, or a summary of, you know, I would say who you are and what you do. So, they, you know. <laughs> so um, that, that is, that is, I'm kind of like an onion. So uh, I am a wife, a mom, a follower of Christ. I am a trained professional wrestler. I have a YouTube channel. I love TikTok. I'm like obsessed with TikTok. I love Indiana Beach is my happy place. I, my, I don't have a niche. I'm unneachable. Uh, I'm <laughs> co-host of the Powers Point podcast, which is bizarre to me all in itself because it's my stepdad's baby. He was on a podcast. It was called the Majors Mess Hall. He was on there. He left there, started his own. And the first, first episode or two, he had scripted mm -hmm. and he was like, thank you for listening to the power. And I was like, no, you can't, <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. And then I ended up coming on to interview a veteran for something that I had been working for, for my, the newspaper that I work for. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
apparently some of the listeners messaged him and said, we liked having her on. So then he was like, do you want to stay? And so now I think this is my second season as like an actual co-host with him. Mm-hmm. But this is my sweatshirt's falling apart, but I was like, represent. Yes, yes, I like that. I'm gonna have to buy, I'm gonna have to buy, I'm gonna have to buy that. You had to give me the site after this. And I get, get, get me one. Give me, give me the site link. I am so bad at this that like I don't even know where it came from. <laughs> uh, Scott, <laughs> I literally show up to the podcast on Fridays and I'm like, what are we doing today? Oh, but I'll I'll figure it out. Maybe we'll okay. have one for you when we see you on the 28th. Oh, you, you got you got me blessed. <laughs> oh, that's exclusive. That's exclusive. Y'all still give me a jacket. Well, you're right. <laughs> So but, yeah, I'm I'm so excited to to meet you in person on the 28th, and where you're gonna be performing is a place that I absolutely adore. Mm-hmm. The owner there, Rhonda, is amazing, top notch human being. I think, and especially after listening to your music, mm-hmm. it's gonna be a great vibe in there. Oh, thank you so much. We have a jam packed of, I think it's four or five art, four or five art. I think five. You know, yep, five. Uh, artists that are going to be, you know, singing and, 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 and dancing and entertaining. And we got sound people and it's, and it's going to be live streamed. So it, it's just a lot, it's a lot going, it's going to be on the, 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 the loud newspaper. So it's going to be, you know, it, it's, it's a lot. This is like a, like the first year anniversary, but this is, this is going to be an annual event, but no, I continue to talk about yourself. We're going to talk about this. Oh, show. talk about me. Talk about me. Um, so I, I'm a dreamer. Mm -hmm. I've written books. I I like to read. Um, So I decided I would write books and why not? Mm -hmm. And like, remember how I said, I like to jump 10 steps ahead. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'm going to write and I'm going to be a bestseller and they're going to make movies out of my books. And that hasn't happened yet, but I do get good feedback when Mm -hmm. people read them. They like them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I thought, wouldn't it be nice to get paid? Like if your job was just to go places and to meet people. Mm-hmm. And I, I still haven't figured out how to get paid for it, but I'm chasing it down. Mm-hmm. So I've got my YouTube channel. I've got my Instagram channel. And I, especially on YouTube, I try to go to different places and I just talk to the camera the whole time. Hey, mm-hmm. we're here. And this is where we're going to, what we're going to do. And uh, my daughter is in a lot of it with me. Nice. And this is really cool. So I was working out with a trainer in Cedar Lake, my hometown. Mm -hmm. And I went to these, these grounds called the monastery grounds and it's been here forever, but I had never been. And as I was walking around, I thought, wow, this is like the most beautiful property. Mm -hmm. There's prayer grottos, there's statues, there's like a pond lake somewhere in there. And I thought this, this is too beautiful and it's for sale. It's going to end up getting tore up and it's going to be a development. So I had my phone with me and I started recording and I was saying, Hey, please, please somebody out there on the internet, save this property. Do Mm -hmm. not let this place get tore down. Fast forward six months and a couple, probably two months ago. Now I got an email from a group that was they're in the process of purchasing that property. Yes. And they had seen my YouTube video and they were like, not that it was like a deciding factor or anything, but it pushed them over the edge that they wanted to go and personally check it out. Mm -hmm. And so this group is actually doing a fundraiser in our town tonight. And they've asked me to be there. Nice. So I'm like, I get to be on your podcast right now. And then (laughs) in a couple hours, I get to go to this fundraiser. I feel like a celebrity. I like it. I'm just marching forward like this this is all going to work out. Eventually, this is going to be my job. Yes, of course, of course. And I really, I really love like, um, from hearing, you know, parts of the podcast that I've, I've heard and from like, you know, just being on the phone with you, it's just the, the, the spontaneity, the, you know, the creativity, the drive, you know, it's like the will to just keep going. And I, I really, I really admire that. I like being around people like that because those are like like-minded people that are pushing for something, that have a dream, and at the same time, you making your dreams a reality. You, you know, and and I, in the future, I promise you, as as you keep going, I promise you, I know you'll be you'll be able to get paid just to go places and places and places 
you know, I, I know it will because, you know, you have the drive, you know, and, and if I know, you know, where I am right now and where you are right now, as long as we both keep pushing in yes. our areas, we're going to go to where we, where we're going to go. So, you know. Yeah. And you know what, when we spoke on the phone the other day, I feel like that was the one thing that like really like bonded us. Like we're the same, we're the same type of person, mm -hmm. you know, we're not just like dreamers and trying to do this for us. Mm -hmm. We're like, well, Hey, if I'm going to do this, can I bring you with, yes. you know, and we're always looking around. And that's something that we do on the powers point podcast too, is we're always looking for up and comers. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. my friend, Josh, he, his stage name is big Hefe. He yeah. is a comedian. I love him. Mm -hmm. He is hilarious. We had him on. We had to be like, hey, we can only hit the sensor button so many times, you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so good. And like, I can't wait to see him make it. Mm -hmm. And then I, my husband and I co-own a professional wrestling company too. Oh my goodness. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> so we, we do independent wrestling shows. We're both trained professional wrestlers. And now that we've gotten older, mm -hmm. we mostly stay on the outside of the ring. But, you know, one of our guys is an aspiring blacksmith and he makes all kinds of cool swords and knives and iron twisted jewelry and stuff. So we had him on the podcast and you, you seem to be the same kind of person, you know, you're like, Hey, I see someone else that's trying to move and shake. I'm moving and shaking. Come mm -hmm. with me. Yes. And, like we need more people like us yes 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 i agree because it's 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 the one thing to where like for me i'm the type of person where even because some people say oh well okay like i'm gonna do it in like this say like you got music genres and say if you got soul right here and say if you have country right here a lot of people they they people like me and you would merge those things together mm -hmm. to grow bigger and to collaborate a lot of people would just stay right here and right here at soul and country and if you're not doing the same thing i'm doing then you're not no i'm like if it doesn't matter i can learn from anybody that is as passionate as yeah. me even if it's a different field and so i'm the type of person where it's like hey i do this and you do this because of your drive and your passion I want to stay in that peer group and we can help grow each other, but not just that, but we can learn from each other yes. and grow. And at the yeah, same time, and that's a support system. It is. And you're so right about learning from each other because every person you meet, you're going to pick something up from that person mm -hmm. and it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know? So like, I know I am very particular about who is in my circle and who I am letting have some of my energy because I don't have time for toxicity. Mm -mm. You know, there's, I, and I know I was like, I don't do statistics, but like, I, I keep having these pop into my head mm -hmm. and for every 10 minutes of negativity that you take in, it takes one hour of positivity for your brain to even off. Mm. Who I, has that much time in the day? <laughs> I, exactly. It's too much. Mm -hmm. And like I and, and like with with that right, because I'm gonna be honest with you, because in this pod at Instagram podcast, we don't cut no corners. You know, it's been recently people that I've had to cut off and to get myself back in that that level center and to keep going. And my circle is small. I might have a lot of different connections and networks yes. and all that. You know, you could you're gonna, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna need that. But as far as your circle of people that you know that are your support, that you know, that are not not yes men that supports you, really supports you emotionally, spiritually, and, you know, and, and all, all the above, you know, that, that right there, it, it shows that I have a small circle too. My circle, who I can count all, all the, all the, my circle, I, I count them all on this one hand right here. <laughs> right. And it's not even all fingers, all five no. fingers. It's not. No, no, but you know what? It, those are the people that feed into you and you feed into them. And then like you, you have a ton of acquaintances. Mm -hmm. I, everywhere I go over here, I know somebody, mm -hmm. but that's cause that's what I do. I do things and I know people and I, I don't know. I want to, I want to learn from everybody. I want to pick up little treasures or little don'ts mm -hmm. <laughs> from everybody I meet. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and like, you know, it's, it's just, this is, 
I'm really feeling the energy here. This is amazing, guys. Um, but the thing with um, they talk about this professional wrestling because that <laughs> I didn't know about that. That blew my mind. I love wrestling. I need to come to a show. I, I that blew my mind. They talk about that. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so actually in high school. I went to a sleepover at a girlfriend's house and she was like, oh, we need to watch wrestling. And I was like, no, ew, like why? And she was like, trust me. And she turned it on and the rock came out and I was like, oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to watch beautiful people in spandex, right? Like, <laughs> come on. Mm-hmm. So the more I watched it, the more I thought this is storytelling, which I've always been an author. I've always written things. I've always liked to tell a story. Mm -hmm. So I I kind of fell in love with wrestling, like senior-ish, sophomore-ish, junior-ish year in high school. I end up meeting these guys that are professional wrestlers on the independent circuits. Mm. So these aren't the guys that you see on TV, but they're the guys working their way to TV. Mm -hmm. And one of them I could tell was kind of the leader of the group. And I thought I have to impress this guy so that he will allow me to train to be a wrestler. Well, I ended up marrying him. Ah. (laughs) but He did end up training me. And I thought because we were dating at the time, I'd I'd get it easy. No, no, (laughs) it was so hard. You know, in wrestling, people think it's fake. Mm -hmm. but the ring is made up of steel. It's a steel frame on two by fours that have steel cross frames under the two by fours and about that much of like a carpet padding underneath. And then the mat is stretched over. So it's pretty right. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And the first thing you learn to do is you learn to fall without hopefully breaking your neck. (laughs) And you just do that over and over and over and over again. And the next day you wake up and you're like, I can't move my head. (laughs) It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now this was years ago. So women's wrestling was not at all what it is now. And a lot of the girls that were involved in wrestling while I was training were the ones that would come out in a little bra and be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to wrestle you. And my, my husband, boyfriend at that time was like, we're not, you're not doing that. So I wrestled with the guys. Mm -hmm. I trusted them. They trusted me and we, we wrestled, Mm -hmm. but we wrestled at a church (laughs) (laughs) and the pastor was like, listen, I love you. I'm glad that you're involved. It looks kind of bad in the church when the boys are beating you up on the shows. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I could see that. (laughs) I ended up doing a lot of managing a lot of ring announcing I went to school for radio and television broadcasting Mm. because my initial goal was to be a WWE commentator or WWE ring announcer, Uh all because I saw The Rock. (laughs) I have a WWF tattoo. Oh, wow. That was fun. Um, But then, so fast forward, my husband and I are, are traveling to different feds, we're on the shows. And then he says, I'm done with this. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm going to retire from it. Mm-hmm. he quits. I stay in for a little bit longer. We decide it's time to have a family. So I quit. We have our daughter. She's probably about two. And he comes to me and says, I want to do wrestling again, but I want to do it on my terms. I don't feel like I fit anywhere. So I want to have our own wrestling fed. Mm-hmm. And I said, 100%, let's do it. The ground rules are sometimes in independent wrestling, the people are disgusting. They're like not good people right? in my experience. Mm -hmm. So I said, we are going to cherry pick our people. I want it to be a positive, a good environment. I don't want any of the backstabbing. I don't want any of the drama and it cannot run our life Mm -hmm. because for the longest time, everything we did circled around when wrestling practice was, when the shows were, and you don't get paid a full-time salary in independent wrestling. Mm. So it was, it was just a lot. And he agreed to my terms and we started backbreaker wrestling. And so we've been around for, I think this will be like year five. Okay. We had to take a year off because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, we were scheduled to have a show on March 20th and it was like March 15th that they were like, yeah, the world's going to shut down. There's a pandemic. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So Ooh. that took us out for a year, but we have done shows. We are the first and so far only pro wrestling company to do a show at Indiana beach in the historic ballroom. We did that last year. We sold the place out. There were over 400 people hey. in there screaming and cheering. Um, we've run in Griffith, Indiana. We have a show under the lights in Cedar Lake at the baseball fields this summer. Hey, I'm coming. I'm coming. Do it. Yes. It's going to be just, it, it's, it's a passion project mm -hmm. and it's just, it's so cool. You know, and we've gotten to meet some wrestlers that we otherwise wouldn't have crossed paths with. Mm -hmm. And then some of them that were just starting to train when we were retiring, are now like some of our main guys that we use on all of our shows. So it's, it's a family. Amazing. Wow. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> you, 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 you never know who you're coming. This is, everybody is listening to gun listen to this. This is a witness on, you never know who you'll cross paths with. No. Ooh, it's it, wrestling. I love wrestling. <laughs> I love it. I used to wrestle on the, on the rug. <laughs> Right, with my, with my with my brother and all my other like cousins and stuff like that and in the hallway and I used to I used to like act like there's a fake person I'm wrestling and do the undertaker moves and all that stuff sit up like yeah just sit <laughs> up and do the fake tombstone make sure I don't hurt my knees <laughs> do do all that like really like I used to jump like I would jump in the air like I was super fly snooker and go down <laughs> on the carpet Hurt my oh stomach. My still get back up after I hurt my stomach. So like, so many kids grew up doing that, and I don't know how any of you guys can walk, <laughs> like as adults. <laughs> I, it's crazy, and you know, my daughter has grown up with this. Mm -hmm. So wrestling shows for her are normal. You know, she's used to running around a gym with two hundred and fifty people in it, and mm. she tells her friends that the concession stand is free for her. Cause you know, we buy all of the concessions yeah. and they know that when she comes up, just give her whatever she wants. So now she's, she's got like friends in class that she's like, I can get you free chips <laughs> if you come to the show. <laughs> you know, and the wrestlers, those, we don't, we don't throw around like relational terms very often. Like that's your uncle or whatever. Mm -hmm. If it's not like an actual family member. Right. But can you imagine when she gets old enough to like date? She's almost eight. Oh, so wow. give it another few years. This poor guy is going to be surrounded by all these wrestlers. Like, what are you going to do with her? <laughs> Where are you taking her? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Yes, yes, yes. Well, oh, and I'm a bad guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I was. Right now I'm stuck being the ring announcer. And so I'm, I'm a good guy, mm -hmm. but during my like favorite time of wrestling, when I would manage, I was a bad guy and I love to meet people, but it was so much fun to tap into like the inner mean girl. <laughs> I'll never forget. We had one show. There was a girl that was at every one of our shows and I was walking around the ring and I was like the tough girl kind of like, like I didn't just come out there like, oh, I'm going to smack you in the face. Like I would be choking the guys on the ropes and <laughs> if they caught me, they'd throw me around, you know? Mm -hmm. And this girl was like, you sit down and getting in my face. And I pulled my arm back. Like I was going to smack her. And then I stopped and she was like, you won't do it. And I was like, no, I don't want to get ugly on my hand. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I could never in real life be that mean to anybody, mm -hmm. but it felt so good. And it was <laughs> so funny. <laughs> and she was like, <gasps> oh man, I'll see you next month. It'll be fine. Yeah. And that, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that's amazing. So is it, is it like, so do you guys have like the matches on YouTube where people can, people can see as well, or it's just like, you just, this is live right now. There are a few of our shows on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have said, oh, stream it, stream them live. Mm -hmm. But wrestling is kind of dictated by the audience. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so if we start streaming them, then people won't come because they'll be able to sit at home or sit on their phone and watch. And wrestling needs that personal touch. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to look out into the crowd and have those, I don't want to get ugly on my hand moments for it to really matter. So we do have a couple of shows that are up on YouTube. If you look up backbreaker wrestling. Okay. And then on um, all of my social media is coronation underscore creation. Mm -hmm. After I had a TikTok go crazy on me, I I changed all (laughs) of my social names. Yeah. Um, I had people messaging me that I was a bad parent and that like they should take my kid away. What? Because I said that I don't like to play Barbie dolls. (laughs) Wow. Just for saying that? Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. You, you will find me as Coronation Creation mm-hmm. on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. Uh, and on my YouTube, that's where I was going with that. My brain is everywhere. Mm-hmm. On my YouTube channel, I have like setting up for show day or get ready with me while we get ready for the show and little snippets of the show and even recording some during our Indiana Beach show. Mm-hmm. So if you're into independent wrestling, that would be a cool one to check out. And my stepdad, Scott, who is my co-host for the pot- podcast, is currently a bad guy on the wrestling shows. Oh. So, yeah, it's a whole family affair. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm looking forward to coming. Now, I, man, I, I got to know when the next... Re- we will talk about it after, after we get off the air, but we gotta, we, I got to see what the next show is. I got to come over there. I got to see. I don't care. We've I'm got one in Griffith in June and one in July in Cedar Lake. Oh, I'm, I'll be there i'll be there either one or both i'll be there oh my goodness (laughs) yeah but um yeah so um wow this is amazing um and we definitely we definitely we're gonna we're gonna definitely get you get you back here we're definitely gonna get well thank you definitely because it's like now it's like it's just so many so many layers like um but so as far as uh i would say you already talked you some of the questions you already talked about that's great um (laughs) So as far as the, the newspaper, how did you get in contact with that? And how, how has the experience been? Because I'm actually, this is an exclusive, but I'm actually uh, on the verge of researching to put together my first ever newspaper for the Instant Era podcast. So like- Oh, that's even, super cool. Even though you're going to be dropping gems to everybody, I'm really going to be taking in the gems about the newspaper. <laughs> so like, how, how, did you, how did you get, you know, in this- so for more of the newspaper side, I will have to connect you with my, the president of our group, the Herd Media Company and the Hoosier Media Group is Don Hurd, And he is my big boss. He is okay. the president of our company. So I said that I was obsessed with Indiana Beach, right? Mm-hmm. Always have been. So over the years, I've gotten to know a lot of the employees. Don at one time was like the social media manager or the marketing manager or something there. He was a big way. Mm -hmm. And so I got to know him pretty well there. And then the park closed. And when it reopened, uh, he was brought in and allowed space within the park to make a historical center so Mm -hmm. that we could honor the previous 95 years that the park had existed. Mm -hmm. And he knew how much I loved it because we had known each other forever. And he said, would you like to be a part of this history center? Absolutely. So I brought part of my collection in. We're talking all the time about Indiana Beach stuff. And I casually said, hey, my daughter's in school now. I'm looking for a part-time job. Mm -hmm. I know that you know everybody. If something comes up, would you think of me? Mm -hmm. And he said, I actually need a marketing consultant in your area. Uh... (laughs) And I said, well, I have no experience. (laughs) (laughs) So... I met with my business manager and they offered me the job and I graciously accepted because it's part-time. We had an office at the moment, um, but then after the pandemic, we'd close that and we all work from home. So it's part-time. I work from home. My job is to know people, to build relationships with the community and the people in it. I graduated from high school in the town that I live in now. Mm -hmm. And my daughter goes to schools that I went to. So I already have kind of like a base knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's been so enriching for me to get back out into the community and see people that I went to school with that now own businesses or are 
you know, they're active in the community doing other things and running for town council. And I get to see them on a professional level Mm -hmm. as well as a personal level. Um, And it's, it's been kind of hard for me because I hate dealing with money. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that I hate money because money is useful and it's good for so many things, but I have spent so much of my life struggling financially and Mm -hmm. wondering what's, what's coming next. And I don't have a savings account. And what if this breaks down and what will I do then? That when I go to a business and I have to say, hi, our rate is $10 per column inch. And that ad's going to be $300. I expect them to laugh at me and be like, who's got $300 for that? You know, Mm -hmm. that's been my biggest obstacle so far Mm -hmm. is understanding (laughs) that everybody is at a different walk Mm -hmm. and everybody is in a different place. And the advertising is beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. It's something, it's a necessity for them to be able to succeed and that it's okay for me to accept the money to help them succeed because that's my job and I am doing a service to earn my paycheck Mm -hmm. so that I can provide and I can donate to things and I can be an assistance to the world, you know? Right. It's it's been nuts, but I've been able to learn a lot about like a column inch. You know, if I said, oh, it's a two by two, previously I would have been like, what does that even mean? Yeah. Out of all the things in my life that I do, math is not one of them. I do not math. You know, but now I can say, oh, a two by two is about the size of a business card. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, yep. Yep. I'm learning a little bit about layout because my editor is fantastic and he'll kind of explain things to me, even though he's the one doing the page layout. But if I mm-hmm. say, well, why, why did you put that ad there? Why didn't it go over here? Mm-hmm. You know, I ha- I saw that going differently in my head. Right. And he'll take the time to explain it to me. It's it's been good. It's been really good, especially getting to be there for my daughter. She is asthmatic. She has allergies. So like right now with the tree pollens going crazy. Yeah. If she stays home from school, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, I send an email in that says I may be away from my desk for a little bit, you know. Or I won't be in the field working today. I'm working definitely from home. Mm-hmm. My daughter's sick. And they're so good to us. They're like, family first, take care of her. Right. You know? So it's been really good. Great. Great. That that's that's amazing. And um also as far as um let's see here, I would say the community where you guys are, where you guys reside in, as far as you you know, the wrestling the you know radio personality the podcast personality you know um as far as entrepreneurship and you know owning a business or you know having a business for something like this especially in i would say a rural area Mm -hmm. because the thing i like about northwest indiana is that you know they don't lose touch of you know the hands-on experience you know, it's not just everything. Everything is people are going up with electronics, but it's like you still have to have this physical paper. You still have to go out there and thrift shop. I, yeah. was, I was the only one I knew that went so-called thrifting, except for like oh, older people. No disrespect. Oh, no. Right? But still, but when I went to, you know, Northwest Indiana and performing there and everything like that, and people asked me that was performing with me, hey, you want to go thrifting? I said, what? <laughs> You want to go, what did you just ask me? You want to go thrift? Let's go right now. I can tell you which town has the better goodwill for particular items. (laughs) This is amazing. And you know what? Like 15 minutes north of here is the town that I actually grew up in. Mm -hmm. I came, I did school down here, but I lived about 15 minutes north and it's a bigger money area. Mm -hmm. Those people throw away everything i have a huge patio umbrella it looks like new it works perfect it was at the curb a brand new wheelbarrow it's on the it was on the curb the shepherd's hooks for gardening iron planters that are like 45 dollars each there's three of them just on the curb (laughs) i'm like 
yeah, put that in the trunk. <laughs> wow. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's going to go sit and rot in a landfill. Yes, yes. And, and that's the thing about like those, those, you know, I would say to me, those treasures. And, you know, um, to the people out there, how would you, how would you, um, well, basically you kind of already explained it, but as far as Northwest Indiana or Indiana, wherever you're living at in your experience, how would you say has, how's the experience living there? I like it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it's the dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think in my heart, I'm more of a country girl. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we have family in the South, particularly in Tennessee, uh, on my husband's side. And we would go when we were dating just to like visit them every summer. Mm -hmm. And we were married. I think I might've been pregnant or I was almost pregnant the last time we went down there mm -hmm. and I cried the entire way home. Oh. Like, why am I going back? Oh. Everybody's so nice. Everybody waves. I, they're just, it's a whole different experience. Mm -hmm. um, but Northwest Indiana has its perks. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's interesting, our stereotypes on the different areas and even the different schools. Mm -hmm. And it kind of does have that like small town feel. Yes. Uh, like, so I graduated from Hanover Central High School, class of 2003, hey. uh, the Wildcats. <laughs> I adored my high school. There were 96 of us in my graduating class. Mm. So we were small. And we had a rivalry with Boone Grove. And to this day, I hate Boone Grove. Why does that keep doing that? Uh, it's, <laughs> I'm like, what is that? Go yeah. away. <laughs> to this day, if, if they're like, oh, Boone Grove's coming to town. I'm like, boo. Or somebody <laughs> says, oh, we moved. And my kid's going to go to Boone Grove. And I'm like, why? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> why would you do that? Exactly. From rivalries from 20 years ago. So I, I think Northwest Indiana does have like that. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Right. Um, and we're growing. Mm -hmm. I think my biggest issue right now is that we've lost a lot of our green space mm -hmm. and we're continuing to lose. Right. People are coming over, particularly from Illinois, because the taxes are so high there that when they come here, they can afford a brand new house and a nice car and a mm -hmm. big yard. And those are all wonderful things. And I don't want to deprive anybody of what they can have. Right. But at the same time, there goes our fields. There goes where we could have a walking trail or a park, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, the politicians are like, taxation. <laughs> Bring all the houses in. Exactly. So that kind of sucks. So I'm a little bit tainted right now. <laughs> okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> You know, we, we, we need, we need more all, than you bargained that, for on that all, one. I'm sorry. We need all that, all that gems. They need to know everything. We speak them, spell, cut, splice. We need everything. <laughs> everything. Sharp edge, double edges. Right. But yeah. <laughs> I'm such, I'm such a goofy, but, um, but yeah, but we definitely got to get you on here again. And, 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 you know, um, and, and also next time, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But next time I definitely want you and your, your stepfather from the PowerPoint, like, you know, after, you know, we go and, you know, I go on, you guys, yeah. we, we just need to merge that thing and ha have both podcasts side He's by side. He's hilarious. You are going to love him. Oh, yeah. You won't get many gems of wisdom from him, but you'll enjoy talking to oh, him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, Lynn, like I said, we, we, because it's just it's like it's so many layers like it's so many different i know <laughs> so many layers you can't just have one episode with lynn you no you can't i'm unneachable exactly <laughs> exactly and so um i know you already said you know for your you know the podcast and everything you know uh you know feel free to right now plug all your social medias and everything like that you know and, and websites for you know uh power power you know podcast and everything <laughs> You know, and also, you know, if there's any last words, feel free to say anything before we wrap. Powers Point Podcast is our big one. It is on everywhere that you can listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, whatever all the technical stuff is. <laughs> you can find me personally on social media, on Instagram, TikTok, 
and YouTube under Coronation Creation because I am your crowning moment. And you like that? Threw yeah, that one I like in there that. For I like that. <laughs> and I do have a public page on Facebook because I keep my circle small. So friend requests are hard to come by. But um, I do try to keep in touch with people on Facebook. It's under facebook.com slash hey, it's Lynn from YouTube. And that's where you can find me. Um, TikTok, I'm close to being able to enter their creator program. So Ooh. help help a girl out. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely, definitely. And I will send, I'll put all the links in the description, you know, of this video. So y'all go click that. Y'all show Lynn some love. Y'all show Lynn. And, and I, I am very, you know, this this really made my day today because, you know, uh, today, I say, you know, it's a lot of things that um that so much to do list, you know, as as you already know, and it's yeah. like this is like a little fresh of zen, fresh, you know, fresh air, fresh breath, and so I want to thank you so much for being able to allow me to have you on. Well, the thank podcast. you. It made my day. I'm telling you, I feel so special. I'm like, I get to be a guest. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for making my day. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody. Go show Lynn some love. And like I said, it's your boy Lil L. And this is the NSYNC Era Podcast. And we out. Woo-woo. Bye. <laughs>